I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Charging through the waves, it's a seal beast. Kabaros on the hunt never cease. Guns ablaze, foes dismayed in the smoke and fire a legend's made. Kabaros, juggernaut of the sea. Firing round, setting targets free. With the roar louder than thunder, he's the warship that pulls you under. Hey team, this is Ripper here. You guys are doing fantastic today. Get a fun video regarding just tips on how to become a better destroyer player and what I've seen. Again, these are just my opinions, my thoughts on how I play World Warships, uh, especially the DD gunboat main role. And what better way to start off with the Kabarovs? And we'll go through a couple of uh, other videos. And this is just me talking, having fun, uh, sitting with you guys, enjoying the video, and just observing some of the tactics and techniques we use to uh, get better. And uh, I, I saw. Um, uh, trend last do a video about how to be a good torpedo boat to shore and what better way to do it with uh doing a video about how to be a good dd main uh kind of gunboat destroyer not focusing on torpedoes but just focusing on sheer raw gun power but before again like subscribe button below appreciate all the support of the channel at 4,000 subs do another premium giveaway and as always thank you guys for building a great community and having a blast doing it at the same time so let's get right to it the kabarovsk uh detection 7.9 so we know we're going to get spotted. This is arms, arms Race. I love playing this mode, by the way. Arms Race, more of arcade kind of style, Convoy, Escort. Those kind of, this mode shuffle is very, very fun and enjoyable. I think it's a little different change of pace. Wargaming, if you're hearing this, definitely include this as a separate game uh, option mode and just having a uh, really good time doing this. Uh, a lot of... Uh, very good, unique uh, situations where you can use different tactics and different play styles just to have fun and uh, and really just test out some new different builds, uh, like secondary builds, gun builds, um, lighthouse, tower builds, whatever you want. But really fun right here. So what is the basic overall tip right here? I'm just going to tell you right now as a destroyer player, stay alive. If anything, of course, any games that stay alive, obviously, but no, no, no. You are the role that needs to stay alive the most because why? I've noticed every game that I've seen where all the destroyer players die on one side, that side just caves in for some ungodly reason. I don't know why. Players just don't cannot live without a destroyer player for some reason. Battleships run away, cruisers run away, uh, the nobody else is available to do anything. So the destroyer player for some reason is that wall and that block, that filter, that of antivirus software, what do you want to call it, that just stops ships in their path, and it's very devastating, kind of like what submarines are doing these days, right? But I digress. Anyways, what are we doing right here in the Kabarovs? Well, what is the Kabarovs known for? Again, pick the best destroyer for your style and ability of gameplay. I like gunboat DDs. Uh, ooh, I took a major hit right there. Again, de definitely want to try to stay alive here. Don't don't take unnecessary damage if you don't have to. Me, of course, I know I can do that with the Kabarovs. This style of gunboat play gameplay is literally just get shot out the most. Notice at the top right there, you're going to see my potential damage skyrocket through the roof because I'm literally just absorbing damage. I'm literally drawing fire from everybody. I'm the biggest distraction on the map, so why not? That is you, what you're supposed to do, is have everybody fire you. Look at Rhode Island's firing at me, seconders of Sheaf and coming on, and guess what? Everybody's paying attention to me, and, and, but here's the cool thing aspect of it. If you're a good gunboat, and the way I built it is for a ma trying to get as much maximum reload as I can and with Fearless Brawler activating in the background there, building it for a DPM gunboat build, you can do a lot of damage just by using your guns, which are consistent. I find they're way, way more consistent than I and than torpedoes because with the you know abduction, uh, the uh, abdication of uh, hydro nowadays, everybody's got hydro. It seems like, and you got torpedo destroyers. I'm sorry, destroyers out in front that can spot the torpedoes ahead of time. And literally, a lot of the times, people can get uh, kind of get a sense of the game and they can really spot those uh, torpedoes from long ranges away. And and you got to wait for a long reload. So I don't like that. I want to dish out as much damage as I can possible. Send tons of shells down range so that I can get maximum, <coughs> excuse me, maximum firepower and damage to a uh, particular side, and that causes all kinds of mayhem and chaos. And that's exactly what we're all about here. If you look at battleships, if you shoot at me, I will shoot back at you. Okay, and that's 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 what I want to do. I want the game to be enjoyable and engaging. Battleship players, I encourage you to push up, move forward. That's what I want, not this run away kind of way thing. But again, that's why as a DD gun, but man, I'm going to fire at you. If you look at me or you start pushing, I'm going to shoot at you and cause this game to be enjoyable, right? So as a destroyer player, what's the first thing we're doing? We're first of all, I hit the tab button. As you can see right there, analyze 
things in the map, figure out what are kind of opposition am I going against? What kind of destroyer players am I going to face? Am I going to face radar gunboat destroyers? Am I going to face heavy gunboat destroyers? Am I going to face a Marceau with speed or Clabert with French saturation and speed? I mean, all those types of threats, you want to analyze the battlefield first before you start. And then you want to wait a little a bit, uh, wait a little bit and to figure out which destroyer is on what side. Notice that there's a Benham on the left side. I know it from my history of playing the game that a Benham is a torpedo machine gun boat. It literally drops torpedoes like every other second or something like that. It's just ridiculous amount of torpedoes, so I'm probably not going to want to play against him. He has a better concealment. He can torpedo me to death. He, he may not even have to fire at me, revealing his position. So it's very difficult for me with a 7.9 uh, detection and, and literally just my my goal is to get people to fire at me. And look, my heel, uh, my heel, especially with these arm buffs, um, the health buff, it's bringing back my health back to life. And I have a great amount of uh, HP. The Cabros, if you know, study the, the gunboat layout. This, the armor layout of a Cabros has 50 mil arm plane or a certain section of the ship. So I'm, basically, I'm like a literally powerful, powerful destroyer. Uh, that it can dodge shells, block shells, and very, very heavily armored compared to, say, another uh, light gunboat destroyer or like a Gearing or Shimakaze, right? I have way more, way more armor. Um, the downside, of course, is my concealment bow. This is what I'm talking about here, raw gunboat power damage. Something about this gun, these guns on the Cabrops are unique because, man, I'm doing some major damage on battleships, cruisers. Look at 2,400 damage on four sets of guns that do... I mean, let's take a look at, look, look at what these guns can do. There's something about this gun. Uh, look at this, 130 mil uh, our guns. Like, I mean, there's a lot of ships out there with 130 mil guns, but they go out 900 meters per second out the barrel. Da damage is about 2,200 now with the, bar the buffs, and they are incredible. And they do so, so much damage. And the reload time is a little bit higher. Fire range is 13.5, pretty decent for the gun build uh, we're doing here or using here. And look at this, we're just like shredding the sleep. I mean, like I said, if you are gonna try to uh, get attack me, I'm gonna attack back, you know? So be very careful. And again, he's pushing in, great, I applaud that. You know, and I'm, I'm, like, I'm liking to seeing, hey, battleship players push in and try to make a difference in the game. Unfortunately, when you're playing against me and these gunboats, you're gonna get shot at by me, by everybody else, and if you focus at me you're gonna sacrifice again you're, you're gonna you're gonna look at the tree but not see the forest because why you're so preoccupied with me which is what i want players to do i want them to get tunnel vision on the destroyer player which is also a bad thing for a battleship when you are a cruiser player when you're getting such tunnel vision locked onto this oh my gosh a destroyer which is really difficult to hit the cab is probably one of the most i would say distracting most annoying destroyers to play against and, and it's ridiculous now here here's your other task of a destroyer player you want to kill destroyers priority is kill all destroyers on the enemy team that is how you become a good destroyer player look at these guns the ballistics on these guns are incredible and it just they're just not fun to play against look at that i am taking thousands of damage off the Shimakaze, and he's not having a good day, and these guns are accurate, laser-focused, and they produce a lot of damage, letting my team mop up right there. Shimakaze blowing up a Shimakaze while he didn't take much damage at all, because why? We are, we are absorbing damage. He was distracted. He was also looking at other things. That Shimakaze is not a gunboat anyways, but whatever. And we are just dishing out the raw hate right there. That's why I like Kabarov so much. And here we go. Here's that Venom I was talking about. Now, what, what he's going to do? He's going to smoke up as a good destroyer player should do. Go undetected, go conceal. Here's the problem, though. He, all he can do is really just drop torps all over the place, and he is kind of overwhelmed right now. One versus seven. I mean, we have an advantage. Normally, if I was one-on-one -on -one with Venom, I would not pick a fight with him. But since I've, I, I know I've got backup, I've analyzed the battlefield, there's no radar cruisers in the area, I'm going to go ahead and push this objective, okay? So this is what I'm going to do. So how do I do this? I'm going to nose into a torpedo boat. That's how you counter a torpedo boat. Nose into him. You wait till he drops his racks, and then you know he's on a cooldown, right? So that's where I know I can show a little bit more broadside. But initially, you want to rush the smoke, use the smoke to your advantage so that you are, your movements are covered, and you're going to rush straight into him. Now, let's see here. Okay, I get spotted right there. He's to my right. So I'm going to go to the right and continue only using the front guns, and I'm going to keep nose in because, again, he has a quick reload, and I know he just dropped torpedoes on me, so I'm going to go ahead and, re and just use the front guns for now. If he decides to go in a position where he's not going to launch torpedoes, I know he can't launch torpedoes from the back side of his ship so there we go i'm gonna start looking right here and i'm okay no look at pay attention to where his guns are okay look i'm gonna pause the video right here look at where his guns are facing right now that means he's aiming at me and that and look he's looking to my front so i'm gonna swing my my camera here look look okay look where he's aiming at. see his guns are facing to my left here so that means he's leading me and he's not firing his main gun so what does that mean that means He's launching a torpedo rack, right? So watch this. 
So he's gonna launch. He's look. He's already aiming in front of me. I already know I got the skill. Boom. Now watch. I slam on the brakes. Hard left turn because I know the torpedoes he launched are gonna go and be in front of me. This is how you literally counter every DD gunboat player or DD torpedo boat player. There they are. Those are the torpedoes that he was intending to to launch at me. So if you notice a torpedo boat aiming in front of you for leading you and not firing his guns, he's launching torpedoes, which means as soon as you either shoot or kill the guy, slam on the brakes, hard over in and towards the uh, torpedo. So here's another power a demonstration of the power of the gunboat. Uh, Kabarov's especially, man, you are literally just melting. Uh, light armored cruisers are special. Like, look, you're taking, what, 2,200, 2,500-ish off this guy? My goodness, look at that. The, the guns on this thing are redonkulous. they got range, they got speed and accuracy, and boom, he goes down. He is taken down right now, and let's take another demonstration of gunpowder power. We're going to go ahead and blow up the Shikishima here. Again, Battleship players, if you shoot at me, I'm going to shoot back at you, okay? I'm not afraid, especially in the Kabarovs. And then, of course, I'm surrounded by my buddies, because why? I did my job as a destroyer player to eliminate the threat. I was in front. I was capping all the points. I was taking all the power-ups. I was killing the destroyers, spotting destroyers, getting people to fire at me, reveal their positions. And, and that's essentially a great aspect of the gunboat DD player and just being a good destroyer player overall in general is one I survived. I did the best I could to survive the long match. I mean, I'm literally, there's only eight minutes left in the game. And look, I got a Shikishima to fire at me. Ouch, does that hurt? It took out a lot of damage, but it's okay. We've got the the uh, power up, and I know his guns have a long, long reload. So, guys, I'm going to take this, uh, this advantage, or take advantage of this time to really just melt him and get him to show uh, a lot of broadside or make mistakes and have him just look around. He's not really sure. He's still looking at me. He's deciding, should I fire at the destroyer? Should I fire? He's, he's just confused right now. He doesn't know what to aim at. And he's just overwhelmed. And look, he's debating, should I fire at the destroyer? And that's what I want you to do. I want all battleship players to fire at me. See, he couldn't even fire. He was just like, uh, should I shoot the destroyer? He's the lowest health. I mean, something about the, the battleship player freezes in front of a destroyer that is literally in front of you. But, uh, you know, that that's that's the nature of it. I want that to happen. I want to draw fire. I want to get people to fire at me and reveal their position and get tunnel vision so they don't they don't pay attention to what's around them, their surroundings. Okay, look at that. 171,000 damage just for a destroyer player. And my gosh, look at that. We're the top two. We are. We literally did m double than their, their highest player right there. So, I mean, yeah, that's how much damage output you can do as a gunbow destroyer player. I like the consistency of it. 171,000 damage uh, from the main battery. 473 shots fired. My God, look at the fires. Just 45,000 damage just in fires alone. And that is incredible. Look, I love this right here. Potential damage. When you're in the millions, I've had Kabarov's games and Druid games where I'm literally in the, like almost 2 million potential damage because I got that many people to look at me. Hello, I'm shiny person here. Fire at me. And all while they're wasting all their ordnance on me and missing, uh, they are getting shot out by my teammates. And that's exactly what I want to do. I'm a team player. I want my enemy team to look at me and fire at me so that my teammates can get those shots off. Okay, so let's take a look at another video that I think is really, really incredible and shows off the power of gunboat destroyer player. All right, so here is another video with the Druid on the map north, and this is just ranked gameplay. Now, what do I do as a good destroyer player? Look ahead of time. What am I facing? A gearing, a club air. Okay, so pretty torpedo, fast gunboat, and we have a small lens, Marseille, no, uh, no radar right there. So that's kind of the analyzation I would do right before a map, and I kind of figure out this is just ranked. It's like clan battles, but except without no communication really with your team other than the mini map and kind of just basic communication. So let's take a look at it. Where am I going? Of course, I'm on the right side. I'm going to go to the contester map on the, uh, the right which is a charlie cap that's probably the most contested cap Bar bravo is a given that's an easy uh, giveaway i'm just initially going in okay what am i doing right here i'm thinking okay what is in front of me with the rpf i don't know it's a destroyer probably there's no radar so i'm not worried about instant detection so i all i can do is just nose in and kind of just get a tactical position and notice right here Okay, let me pause right here. Why do I pick this spot right here for the Druid? Well, one, the Druid has just two guns in front, no torpedoes, right? I got a Hydro, whoop de doo but I can spot maybe the gearing uh, was a Hydro spot ships out to three. So I spot him first. Okay, he doesn't know where I'm there. I spot him. He's got me located right there. Those are the indications right there. I got this little tr uh, kind of like triangle pattern here. Now, I know Trin last did a video about torpedoes. I think, no, I'm sorry. Uh, 
flambasted a video about torpedoing and what is the issue with this uh, torpedoes well they can only torpedo in the open water right here right well I, I have an island defending me so that's a good thing as a gun gunboat player i want to use objects as shields and ta uh, islands and landmass to be my tactical blocking objective that allows me to have shielding and i know that i can't get shot through or destroyed right there that's great one number two is you want to pick fights one-on-one -on -one. I have open area right here, which means I can only be shot at from here. Nobody can shoot me through the islands right here, right? But they can only shoot me through this angle. So I'm literally just going to pull up and just slowly at quarter speed. Again, we're not here to rush to our death. We're here to slow roll it and kind of understand what the battlefield looks like. So again, I'm just going to slowly creep up and get right here so only my front two guns are facing and then I can eliminate him right there. Now, I know he's got torpedoes. He already launched them. There they are. So of course, I know they're coming. I nose into them and mitigate as much of that damage as possible. I'm aiming right here at the center mass. So I'm getting as much damage again chip damage whatever i've popped my smoke so that way it conceals my movement as i'm reversing so i've already thought about my egress plan i'm shooting boom he goes down i eliminated one destroyer that's part of your mission is to eliminate as many destroyers as you can i pop the smoke right here because as soon as he dies boom i go and detect i'm hiding inside my shielding here and now i'm also in reverse knowing that his torpedoes are coming into play i'm noticing this last torpedo and of course i keep that speed up and once you commit to something commit to it do not be that person that is going back and forth being indecisive so that they don't know what you're doing. Like the, the, the biggest killer of everything, and I'm a pilot, uh, the biggest thing I was always taught to my instructors is indecisiveness will lead to killing. If you don't make a decision, just stick with it. Um, you're going to lead to more of this um, jostling back and forth, back and forth, and you're going to make a mistake and just you're going to eat something, destroy yourself, crash yourself, whatever that may be. And that works in all aspects of life. So be decisive, own up to what you just go with, and just flow with it. Go through with it, okay? So as a good destroyer player, we're going to cap, okay? So we're going to cap this point. I'm hydro right now from the Schlieffen. He's got 5.5 hydro. I know I'm detected right now. So now at this point, what am I doing? I'm just really capping that spot and that's it. I'm just kind of figuring out where's the enemy team going to be at right now. I'm really tempted to go after this Vermont right here, but ouch, he can do a lot, a lot of damage right there, but it's okay. He's got a long reload. So right now I'm going to shoot at the the fat, juicy part of his ship is right here. This is the heaviest or weakest armor of his ship, and I, that's where I can maximize the use of my guns and do a lot, a lot of damage right there. So you see that? Firing a lot of AP shells right into the back, and that's what the Druid is really, really known for. Again, I'm being a very nuisance distraction right now. The, he's only aiming at me and he's keeping my minotaur and rhode island alive just by not shooting at him he's distracted by me and that way that i'm doing my job i'm being that annoying player that literally will distract all your battleship players from shooting and killing your teammates you want to be that team player where you protect your teammates and one way to do that is take the shots all right so i know vermont's going to go around the corner and let's see, we can slowly, slowly not take... Yep, he fired at me. Ooh, ouch. I almost I took a major one. Okay, now we're going to make a decision here. So we don't want to go chase into our death, Vermont, but I do know Burgone is coming into play, and that's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to get the Burgone potentially out here. Oh, actually, hold on. Uh, okay, so actually Vermont is in a juicy position right here. We're going to go ahead and sneak up behind him. Again, he's got to make a decision. Do I aim my guns at the left side, the Minotaur, or do I aim at me? Well, guess what? He's probably going to look at us and fire right there and bupkis he doesn't do too too much damage to us and that is detrimental to him to the point where he's got to figure out what do i do now do do i do i play around with this druid or do i play around and get melted by the minotaur see because of that small decision right there he doesn't have any ordnance in order to employ onto the minotaur or the rhode island and now he's worried about them now look here i come and now i've made him confused now he's swinging his guns you can see they're swinging back to me and not looking at my minotaur and boom, he fires a shot, which I do absorb that very decently. I'm not too, too bad. And now I'm just shooting at the back of his hole. And look, I'll take 1,000 damage off every second. That's fine. Boom, boom. Look at him. He's going from 6,000 to 5,000 to 4,000. He's going on to four. I think he's... Oh, there we go. He better hits right there. 2,000. You got to get these hits on, of course. And boom, he goes down. Splash two. 79,000 damage right there and lets the power of the druid right there taking on a vermont and taking on a gearing right off the bat charlie cap is secure totally defined giving our bravo team a walk in the park cake walk right now and this is where we get to run oh and here we go we actually have an opportunity again this is another moment to shine is we can el help eliminate destroyer players and that's what we want to do and he goes down from our teammate way to go rhode island and now here we go. Let's take a look. Ooh, small lance is always a pleasure and a very gratifying. Oh, gratifying right there. Gratifying. Oh, just look at that. When you hit a citadel of a small lance and it literally just melt a small lance, it's something gratifying about it. Boom, splash. It makes you want to come back for more all the time. And that is the power of the druid right there. Nose in, firepower. Now I wonder who the Burgonia is going to fire at. Is he going to fire at me? Is he going to fire at the Rhode Island that's pummeling way more damage on him than me? Let's see. Who does he decide to fire? And that shows you the potential power of what a good destroyer player can do. 
Come on, who are you going to fire at? Yep, he fires at me. He's selected to fire at me for some reason in Bupkis. He doesn't do anything, and guess what? We're going to take... He took 1,700 damage off us. Well, we're going to take all the damage from him. Boom, splash four. That is how you do it. And it's okay, we can die at the end there, but you know what? He sacrificed firing at any other, others guy, other guys that were melting him. He would rather fire at me. That's the power of what... A, uh, a druid and uh, this the gunboat power player can be is so so darn effective especially 119,000 damage four kills three citadels on the small lance right there very very awesome number one in the team of course as always uh, 119,000 damage AP only ladies and gentlemen and of course we were shooting airplanes right the potential damage they're almost getting to that 1 million if we had more ships firing on us but we, that tells you that we had that much firepower being placed on us as well again reminder that builds will be at the end of the videos so you can see uh, how I built these as well and let's take another look at a uh, a match that I thought was very good and the Druid. All right, here's another uh, game with the Druid, this time on the map north. Again, that same map, but this time it is air escort and really fun. You just escort your airship along this path, and as long as you get there uh, in first, you win, and you know, the ships stay alive. If you're the last one alive, it win too, of course. Uh, analyzing the map right here, again, very good destroyer player, small and Kitakaze, Shimakaze, Napoli, St. Martin. Okay, so we have a St. Martin, which is a radar. So that's the first thing you want to do. Again, uh, analyzing the battlefield, figure out what you're supposed to do, who you're up going up against, and really kind of getting that game plan ready in your mind. What am I going to do? Where am I going to position myself? The first thing I also want to talk about is um, map positioning. Use the mini map. Okay, I see so many players blow up their map looking like that. What is that going to do for you? Okay, having the mini map that small does you no good. That means you're not even using it. Why even have it then? Okay, so I can I encourage you guys to blow up your map as big as possible. Turn down the transparency so you can still see, you can still aim. And of course, if you don't know how to do that, you can, uh, you know, change the uh, background opacity like that see i don't like that because it cover up covers up a lot of important information on the right and i like to see where am i uh, what am i aiming at right there the next thing you want to do is also use the mini map to figure out where do you need to be and what what is the where are you at what's the problem you have to analyze constantly keep looking back like like, like it's your wife hey i'm over here looking back over here look at my wife going back over here looking back over here look at my wife because you want to know where are enemy players at where is your team at where do they need you look obviously being over here doesn't do you any good right now you want to be where that you're your team is needed, right? If you do going over here to the the ten line over here, it doesn't do you at your team any good either. Again, this is a team sport. This is a team game, a team match. You're literally learning how to work with other people and putting the maximum firepower to bear and using all your abilities and skills to help each other out to win the match. Of course, okay. So again, that's like in sports. That's in the military. Do we do all everything like that? Everything you've ever been taught in uh, any kind of uh, competitive or teamwork based. Uh, thing you're always there to support each other and w maximize your skills and uh, your equipment together to get to the best outcome right i'm using my smoke right there i'm using my equipment to smoke off the minotaur and everybody else behind me so they can fire with ease of course i should have my hydro running up right there i spot torpedoes first for my team okay i'm analyzing that say hey here come torpedoes now i'm holding a corner uh, let's see. Oh, I wonder if a couple people hit up. Yeah, a couple people take a couple torpedoes. Uh, why am I sitting on the corner right here? This is to block torpedoes coming into me from that angle. So I've got mitigating damage from this right side right here. And now I'm putting firepower to bear out into the long range into the sleeve. And nobody's spotting me, of course. Again, that is the best thing you can do is fire from concealment. Not, not alerting enemy to your presence and getting as much firepower downrange as possible. That's your goal, not to die. Remember I told you, first roll, survive the long run. If you can survive without getting hit the longest time possible, that is a good job right there. Number two is you're also trying to kill destroyer players. So look, as a gunboat DD, I got the Shemakazi right there on the minimap. Again, see, I'm using minimap to go where are the enemies, guys at, where do I need to be to be most effective to employ weapon systems. Hydro is also spotting torpedoes for your team. Again, that's an idea of another good destroyer player. You want to spot torpedoes so your team can call up and, hey, I got to avoid these things, and they can mitigate damage. You can't do much when your team is dead, and you can't do much when you're dead as well. So, Ken, what is the biggest threat right now? Soviet Soyuz, and we have a Schlieffen. Look at our mini map right there. Schlieffen is pushing up. So, again, let's see if we can get enough damage. My guns can't really reach the Schlieffen right now, so let's see if we can do as much damage possible from so Soyuz. Notice what I'm doing with my right mouse button. If you see if I'm zooming in and out with the right mouse button, if you guys don't know what that is, that's free look. That means that you can still look around and continue continuously fire and keep your guns pointed in that direction while using the right mouse button to free look around and get a situational awareness of the battlefield around you, kind of overlook of your ship so you know torpedoes are coming, who's a threat, who's moving around. That's what I encourage you guys, a lot of people need to do that, okay? I've seen a lot of players, especially in clan battles or ranked or something, not using uh, their right mouse button and not analyzing the situation around them while they're tunnel vision looking down the gun and just firing and not focusing on something else. I've seen other guys do it with 
um, I would say carrier uh, based um, ships like the Kearsarge or Commissar, they're flying the planes around, but they're not using the free look or they're not using the mini map to guide the ship while still flying the plane. So again, having that ability to know how the game works and how the system works will, will really help you in the long run. So what am I doing right here? I'm pushing up to one spot for my team so they know where the enemy's at. Number two, I'm going to go inside that red circle you can see in front. That's the, their enemy airship, so I slow their airship down. So if I have an enemy player kind of like in their capture zone of their airship, it slows them down. So you can be an effective player doing that as well. And notice I'm also hunting their destroyer player. So I know I can outgun the boat, the small one right here, because why not? AP right into his broadside. It hurts a lot. Now, if he wants to mitigate the damage, he's got to turn away. Ooh, here we go. Another opportunity right here. We're going to blow up and kill their Shimakaze player, being a good destroyer player, kill their team. Here's a free... I'm going to use free look in a minute to look at the torpedo threat in a minute. Yep, you see? Free look. Look around. Okay, torpedoes are not a threat. Continue firing on the small end. He's got to, to turn away to mitigate the damage, which means he only has one set of guns now. So that's limiting his power power to 50%. And that's a good thing, because now I can use both my guns and uh, keep firing at him while he has to just... All he can do is run away at this point. I've already got my smoke up firing from concealment, which is a good thing, knowing that you're boom splash two right there knowing okay let me pause right there why did i do that so the reason why i popped smoke right there knowing his radar was down was why i'm inside the smoke and i'm firing for free now that means nobody's spotting me no radar in the area he's already used his radar now i can shoot and kill him because why he is const he is spotted by this guy over here because there are people in the open not in smoke or behind concealment he is being spotted from that line right there. This 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 line right here, this open area right here is line of sight directly to one of my teammates right there who is spotting for me because as soon as you fire guns, you are lit up like a Christmas tree. That gives me the ability to shoot from concealment because I pop smoke and of course I'm trying to mitigate as much damage as I can. So that's another tactic right there if you guys didn't know about it. Again, some people don't know, know that, but firing from concealment while someone else is spotting for you is a great, great tactic to have for a gunboat DD main. So, oh, here we go. We have a broadside light cruiser are called the San Martin. Now he has radar, of course. We don't want to be caught in his radar. We want to eliminate him as fast as possible. But we also, in order to get mitigate the radar threat, see right now, he is going behind cover, which is a good thing. I want to get behind cover too, so his guns can't shoot me. The radar is the deadliest thing to a, uh, d a destroyer, and you don't want to be caught in a, in the open or being radar by a, uh, a radar cruiser. So you want to get into cover or get into some kind of field of fire where, or sorry, a field where the the islands or obstacles are blocking the enemy guns, so you can't get shot at. So ra renders the radar useless at that point. You're now you're just waiting for the radar to go down. So now his radar's down. He's got to wait for a cooldown period. So guess what? I'm going to use this this time to really set up my position and get it into a position where I could be maximum damage effective and not get shot at and be um, destroyed by his radar so that's what we want to do right now sorry that took a lag right there so here we are uh, Schlieffen's about to be taken down so I'm going to slowly creep up and just use this island cover to slowly creep in if I need to stop I can slam on the brakes here we go right here now first thing we can do is eliminate his guns I'm going to keep shooting at his guns to take out his firepower if people, some people don't realize this if you bl blow up his guns he can't shoot you and do damage so guess what the druid's known for at this close of a range we have laser laser rail guns, and we can just blast his guns right there. I'm going to take out another one. Now, here's where a good point is. If he starts showing broadside, this is not broadside. This is kind of angled still, but again, in eight... Certain ships like the Druid have improved angles, which means if this ship gives about 70 degrees of broadside right here, so this is a 70 degree or less angle, and when he starts doing that, so the angle means like the line from me to hit this line right here, if it opens up and becomes or closes up, it starts to become, uh, um, what is it, 70 or less, that's when I know I can shoot his citadel area, which is at the water line right here. So this line, or this sea, you can just imagine there's a line right here, right at the water line. That is where you want to aim at, okay? So again, that's a good idea when you're starting to deal with these light cruiser gun uh, cruisers with AP and especially these Druid kind of like uh, destroyers where they have good AP, you want to look for these opportunities. Now, if the ship was like nose in like you saw earlier, that was a literally a greater than 90 degree uh, separation or broadside or what, what do you want to call it? 90 degree uh, open angle, right? So it's 180 degrees if he's like line up like this. When he starts closing that angle, when he gets to around 90 degrees broadside right there, that's when you can sell full broadside. When he's uh, like literally opened up, like up and down this line right there, that is more than 90, okay? So when as he begins to turn and closes that, that 90, goes from here. So imagine if uh, there's this line up here and it starts closing the clock, that goes from 90 to 80 to 70. Once you see 70, this is way more than 70 now. I think this is almost like full 
uh, almost zero degrees uh, perpendicular to me, I can get that. So, so right here, as he's going, uh, go showing you a little bit more broadside, notice right there, see, I'm starting to hit, and I'm getting these full pins. And you, you see these full pins happening? is because now he's closing that angle. He's closing that 180-degree that or uh, open area. As he begins to turn to the right, it, it starts showing the billboard of this entire ship right there. And that's what you want to know as a good destroyer player. Catch that. And you can see right there, where it's getting right at the waterline. That's where we get to set it over there. Waterline, waterline, waterline. Keep firing, keep firing. Come on. I'm just looking for that sweet spot. Sometimes the RNG has to work with you because the shells don't fire perfect lines. And I'm just getting all these citadels right there getting all these nice juicy citadels and the rate of fire on the uh, druid is allowing me to do this and boom splash three there we go and we also have to survive this turn turn baby turn keep going reverse and that's why reverse always stay in motion because you can't steer a ship when it's sitting still okay you got to keep in motion doing something so you can steer a ship again for situations like that Okay, I hope that I hope you make that it makes a, a little bit more sense when you when I first saw. Like right now, he's oh, he's closing that that uh, angle right there because he's open. He's going straight along kind of that long line, and that opens up all that angle. And I can't really it it re, um, bounces shells basically. AP does not like angled ships, so you want the ship to close that angle. He's turning into you, so that that angle begins to close from 90 to 80 to 70 degrees or less is where the sweet spot for the, these uh, Druid AP guns are. Uh, other destroyers are about 45. Five degrees to six degrees so he's almost showing pure broadside at that point right so that's what you kind of want to wait for you want to wait for those open moments right there three kills my goodness all right let's see if we can get some more damage on this saint vincent again look at the range of this thing i can reach out and touch somebody and just uh, open fire and gunboat and just do all that nice damage and we're just going to keep firing i think at this point we kind of much win the game and just keep on blasting him yeah, and it's pretty much over. And there's nothing the enemy team can do. They only have one ship left. And we, our airship doesn't even reach there before we kill him. Oh, actually, yep, there we go. He goes down. There it is. And that is the game, The Power of the Druid. Again, I hope that helps out with angling and shooting and so forth. Let's take another look at the video with Marceau. And, man, we just had a blast in uh, the arcade mode of um, Arms Race. All right, here we go. We're looking at a, another arms race with Marceau, one of my favorite, most this most powerful destroyer I've seen in the game so far, the highest DPM in the game at this point of the recording. Uh, pretty darn awesome. Again, good destroyer player. Analyzes the field right here. Club Bear, Kassar, two of the French DD gunboats, kind of the torpedo boats as well, gearing and no radar. And, of course, that's the battleship lineup right there. So let's take a look at it right here, see how we go. All right. All right, here we go. Let's spot it out. What are we doing as a gunboat DD main? Analyze the battlefield, go spot, and go kill other destroyers. But this one, arms race, you want to capture all those power-ups. What, what are the power-ups? Again, looking at the mini-map again. Mini-map is an important tool. Here's one right here. Here's one right there. This one gets you health back. This one gets you gun reload. So I'm, that's my plan. I'm going to capture the health right there. So my team is always healing. Uh, slow pace, but it's still healing, right? So we want to get that. We're going to go ahead and go to the middle right there and capture more spot, uh, more of the uh, capture points in the middle because why? We're, we're the fastest uh, destroyer in the game, so why not I'll run around and get them all and collect them? Now, here you're going to see the problem of uh, me not having a destroyer base on the eastern side. Notice that there are no destroyers supporting that because I had to leave them. Uh, I'm in the middle right now just spotting everybody in the middle and capping all the points because nobody's capturing the points but me. I'm getting the gun reloads help. But the problem is since I left, and again, that's just something you can think about. Oh, here's another roll. I'm killing another destroyer player. So let's see if I can shoot and get enough uh, shots on the gearing. Let's see. I captured another point right there. So our reload is now increased to 2.2, which is incredible for Marceau. So probably really, really overpowered. If you can get the guns down to two seconds on the Marceau. Freaking ridiculous. Again, look at the eastern side. Look at that. They have two destroyers right here working together in tandem. They literally can literally hold an entire area down with just two destroyers. It is that ridiculous um, how powerful destroyer player can be. And I applaud kudos to them because those are also French gunboats and torpedo boats that literally can hold an entire flank themselves and just cause a ruckus right now. And here we are. We're getting spotted right now. I forgot my detection of seven kilometers, which means they were literally right behind the island and getting spotted by the Thunderer right there. All you can do at this point is go just slim profile, go toothpick, and literally just hopefully his RNG won't kill, take as much damage on you as possible. This is a lot harder to hit than you going full broadside right there. So that's another good tactic right there for egress in the area. Again, I don't want to pick a fight with all these guys yet because I have no support. 
And I just have another Ragnar with me right here. So we're going to try to pick up more HP points right there or buffs so that our team is constantly healing and has that increased uh, buff reload right there. So right now, what are we doing right now? We're thinking, well, we're going to pick up this. Uh, ooh, our RPF switched over to the right there. So that's showing there's a threat. It's probably either the Napoli. No, it's actually the uh, Thunderer. So it switches back. So you can actually use that. When the RPF right here switches back and forth, you can now then use the numbers underneath these things to figure out what the other threat was. So if this is 8.1 and that's the closest target now, that means that Napoli or something was a probably around 8.2. So I'm just something right above that. So you can use that as a great technique to figure out where things are. That's why I think RPF is so, so powerful because it's situational awareness on the battlefield and it's always running you know other buffs and um, perks and stuff like that don't activate unless certain things happen with rpf or uh let's say what's another one uh another perk where you're just either fast firing guns or concealment or fiber benching they're always working they're always active so i like things like that uh to gun reloads things things that i like working 24 7 are really good to me i enjoy that rather than having certain conditions being met uh like sparkle you got to be shot at and that's, you have to wait for that to happen i'd rather have something else um that works for me. So let's take a look at this. So what's going on? Ooh, I almost took that torpedo. Okay, you don't want to die off the first, uh, right off the first uh, seconds of the game or minutes of the game. You want to stay alive. That's the whole point right now. So right now I'm, I'm debating. I need to capture the spot, but I got to be detected probably by this Napoli. This Napoli's probably going to detect us. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, hopefully we don't die. Yeah, my detection is 7.0, right? Okay, now we're detected by Napoli. I thought that island would protect me. I guess it did now. We got that increased reload. Look at that. 1.8 second now reload now. So... That's, fear, that's with Fearless Brawler active right there. So let's see here. What are we going to do here? Our team is losing right now. Pretty, pretty darn bad. We're losing ship. They have a ship advantage. We have three ships pushing in the cap. Napoli's going out this way. The two destroyers, or whatever I thought there were. Yeah, the last destroyer over here is still holding everybody off. Had to force our Ragnar to come over and hunt him down. So we're going to see if we can hold off this offensive in the middle. This is where the Marceau shines because it's a gunboat, open water gunboat destroyer. So, so powerful what it can do. Again, battleships, you better kill me or I'm going to kill you, okay? So. Uh, here's the downside. The downside is I'm, I'm spotted, which means everybody has the ability to see where I'm at and shoot. The good side is everybody's shooting at me, which means that's one less set of guns firing at my, my friendly players. And there's another good thing with the DPM. Look at the DPM of the Marceau on arcade mode here, or arms race, where literally 1.2 second eight. I mean, I got to figure out what is the DPM on 1.8 second reload. This thing is ridiculous. Uh, Shimakazi takes out the mains, very good right there, and this guy, he's 44,000 health, and I guess Zepe Verde right here. Their team doesn't have a heal buff, which means that any kind of damage uh, we take off these guys will stick, and all they got is their heals. So we're going to see if we can get as much firepower chip damage as we can off this guy. So let's see if we can get our DPM working. We're moving here. Again, another good thing about the French Destroyers, you are a fast-moving target. So, so difficult to hit. Okay, he fired. Look, at the shells are going way behind me right there, which is a good thing. So I know that my shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake left and right, it's causing them to shoot. Look at my potential damage right there. 1.4 million being shot at me. That is, that's telling me like a 1 million ship or 1 million um, ordnance of firepower is being shot at me. I mean, 1 million firepower of damage can literally take out an entire fleet of ships. And for that amount of force to be shot at you tells you you are being the biggest distraction on the field. That's great as a destroyer player, okay? I can understand if battleships get that, but man, as a destroyer player, if you're drawing that much attention, you're doing your job. So let's see right here. We're going to slow and roll our, our uh, ship right here. We can just start dodging and juking shells. His secondaries are aiming at kind of at the center mass of your ship and leading, of course. So if you are slowing down and changing your speed at constant intervals, it causes the computer to have to readjust and continuously miss those shots. So that's the best way you can do to mitigate that damage. Schlieffen is probably the one of the most powerful secondary ships in the game. Doing Juking those shells are very, very difficult because there's so many that are being shot in the air. Okay, let's take a look at our uh, central cap point. Let's see, um, our team is still into the west, and we are finally killing some guys. GK goes down right there. Giuseppe Verde is uh, this is almost dead. We just got to get a couple shots at him. Okay, let's take a couple shots at him and see. He's only at 11,000. Let's see if we can melt this guy from 11,000 health. Look at the amount of firepower we are dishing out right there. HP regeneration, we're getting the heals, and we're getting the fires. DPM is insane on the Marceau. You start so many darn fires on this thing. Look at all that firepower right there. Not only are we getting alpha damage, we're getting passive income damage on the fire. And boom, splash one. He goes down. He misses the shots right there because we juked when we saw the flash of his guns right there. And that's a great, great way to mitigate right there. So what are we doing right now? We're going to see if we can blow up the Napoli. That is another aspect we're supposed to do. We're going to kill a low health player. And that's in the long run. That's why you need to survive the long run of the game because surviving allows you to do these one-on-one -on -one engagements that you can definitely dictate the battle and how the outcome will be. 
So right now we're going to see if we can get a lot of fire damage. A lot of my shells are not penetrating his heavy, heavy armor, but that's okay. We're trying to start fires and getting other players on our team to shoot. He takes a pop shot at us and see if we can juke a little bit there back and forth. Ooh, that nails us perfectly right there, but hopefully we start enough fires and get him down enough where it doesn't even matter. And he goes down. Way to go, Ragnar. And that's the power of another gunboat destroyer working in unison with another gunboat destroyer. Let's see if we can turn back around. We're getting all the powers. We're doing well. We're at a sh up one ship advantage right now, and we our RPF is showing there is something in the middle. I think it's that last destroyer. So that's we'll just take the fight to him, go head on. Hopefully our Schlieffen can just melt down the Kremlin. We're going to go head on straight at the other. Oh, we lost our Schlieffen. Not a good idea. And there's Kassar right there. We're going to go ahead and, and try to melt him and take him out. That would be crucial for us if we can get him out of the game. And let's see, look at the amount of firepower coming down. We definitely out DPM the Kassard right there. Let's see if we can nail him right there. Come on, baby. Okay, he's. I'm going to lead him because he's going to turn left right there. Walk the shells onto the target. Just keep walking him on him. Boom, he goes down. We have torpedoes on the right side. Hopefully, these will nail the Kremlin. And, and we also have to dodge the Kassar's torpedo. So stay alive, stay alive. And look at that turning right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is the power of turning. And let's see. Ooh, we are just taking way, way too much damage. He's got his rear turret coming to face us. And, ooh, we got nailed by the lorry. I did not anticipate that. But look at that. 2.5 million potential damage. And we're getting passive burning damage income. Unfortunately, it is not enough to win the game. But we almost brought this game back. But that is the power of what a open water gunboating destroyer is supposed to do. Literally absorbing or literally having 2.5 million potential damage being shot at you. That's an amount of ordnance being shot and fired at you, which is a, a powerful, powerful, incredible thing that you want to do as open water gunboat because that means you're juking and dodging shells like crazy because your ship only has, my ship only had 25,000 HP. That means it took 2.5 million worth of shells and HP gunpowder to take down a 25,000 HP destroyer like me with a little bit of heals, of course, but that is incredible at what you can do right there alone. So let's take a look. Uh, Ragnar actually takes out this Kremlin. Let's see if he can get him down. I'll tell, let's see how this the game battle ends for you. Oh, he goes down, and unfortunately, uh, Loria, let's see here. Yep, takes him. Uh, Ragnar takes out the Kremlin, but Loria, eh, he's going to ram this guy. That's funny. And, ooh, takes out a lot of hatred. That would have been a savior if he had just been a little... If we just had enough health to just burn that Loria, we would have won the game. Unfortunately, Shemikaze just can't win the game enough. Yeah, and the game is over right there. He wins. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take some lessons. Take some thoughts. This is, again... I'm not saying to play like me. This is how I play and how I've been successful with the gunboats, uh, especially the open water gunboat DD mains, and really just being able to draw that much attention and firepower and just being that annoying player that really you're you're saving your team by just drawing a lot, a lot of firepower to you, drawing it away from your teammates so that they can uh, just enjoy having a nice, calm day, firing at them and hopefully winning the game. But build will be at the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you guys enough for uh, making this an enjoyable time, having a great, uh, building a great community, having a blast talking to you guys as well as learning new tips and tricks. Again, I'm always learning as well. I watch a lot of other YouTubers as well. It's great. I just, I'm um, hopefully I can add value and just be some kind of a, an open mic here to help everybody uh, open up ideas enjoy the gameplay video if not just watch the videos have fun and uh, make sure you say hi to me when you see me out there and as always be safe and we'll see you soon cheers